All right, everyone. Good morning. And thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Getting Uncomfortable, Awkward Membership Problems and Solutions. So be prepared to get awkward today. We're going to go through all of the weird scenarios that probably are maybe going to happen just once or twice for you, but hopefully it'll help open your eyes a little bit more to some of the different things that you can do with regards to setting up your member types and managing membership types and statuses. Before we dive in, we'll go through a little bit of housekeeping. All of your phones and microphones are muted. So if you have any questions, just feel free to enter them into the chat window. We have Club Express team member Michelle here today today answering all of your questions. So if you have any questions related to our topic, you don't have to save them to the end, enter them into that chat window. A recording of this webinar, as well as all of our other great webinars is available, will be available on our YouTube channel within a few days. And you can find a lot more videos on our YouTube channel, including our tutorials. If you're looking for some of our upcoming webinars, you can check out our calendar on our Club Express website. When you register for webinars through our calendar feature, which isn't required, it gives you the opportunity to enter in information that you'd actually like to see demonstrated during that webinar. So if you see a topic coming up and you've always had a couple of questions about it, register for it in advance. You can throw it on your calendar and you can also submit that item or that question that you have that you'd like to see demonstrated live. And of course, when you're viewing a recording of this webinar or any other webinar, go ahead and hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. It's not just so we get more followers. It's so you actually get notified as soon as we upload a new video or tutorial. So either click that subscribe button when you're watching one of our videos or search for clubexpress.com with .com spelled out in YouTube. And of course, if you are using Club Express and if you're really, really loving Club Express, we would love to hear from you. Go to clubexpress.com slash reviews to visit any one of the sites that you see listed and leave us a review. It helps us get to know what you love about us and it helps other potential Club Express customers figure out if Club Express is right for them. So without any further ado, let's talk about what the structure of our webinar today is going to be like. It's, it's going to be a little bit different. We're kind of going to focus on a lot of the same features. We're going to be focusing heavily on the people manager and the people tab, because we're going to be editing member types. We're going to be setting up memberships, managing memberships. So focus your time on all of the items in the people tab. We're going to present a handful of scenarios, and for some of those scenarios, there are going to be a lot of options that you have, a lot of steps to kind of take to mitigate that situation or deal with it, and then we'll show you how to implement them. So let's start with scenario 1A. You have a member who's passed on, and they're part of an individual membership. So this happens a lot, and we have a handful of different ways that you can actually deal with this. So it depends really on what you want the end result to be. So do you have someone in mind that's going to maybe take over that person's membership? If that's the case, then there are a few different ways that you can handle that. If you simply want to remove a member from your database or drop that member because they have passed on, that's a really simple, uh, simple thing to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of these options. So you're going to see me going back and forth between our slides so we can take a look at what option we're talking about currently. Right now, let's take a look at option number one. So we're talking about a member who's passed on from just an individual membership. And I am going to switch my screens here. So now I'm signed into one of our demo clubs as Martin Smith. Martin Smith is an administrator, so he has access to all of these features that I'm going to be going through today. But just keep in mind that if you have someone who's listed as a coordinator, you want to make sure that you're giving them all of the access that they need. So whenever we're taking a look at the, uh, these particular functions, for example, right now I'm going to go into the people manager. In order to do what I'm about to accomplish, you're going to need to have access to the people manager. So take a look at our YouTube channel. We have a lot of videos and tutorials to talk about administrators and coordinators and how you can set up those rights for them. So I'm going to pop into our people manager, which is our member and non-member database. 
And I am going to search for a member that, uh, you know, maybe I've gotten a call from their spouse to say that they have passed on and, you know, maybe they don't want to continue getting emails or maintain a membership with your organization. So I'll look for that particular member in my database and I can search for them using their last name. I can search for them using their email address or maybe their phone number. And you'll see that with that information, I have those standard maintain options, but what I'm focusing now is actually in the membership column. And you'll see that Tom Woods membership is active, but that active notation is actually a link. Now, when I select that, and this is true for any of the members, so you might see membership statuses of expired or prospective, that's a link. So clicking that link is going to allow you to edit any member's status. Now, we're going to talk about a lot of these uh, statuses later. So for right now, I just want to focus on the drop status. So with the drop status, there are a couple of things to focus on. First, you put in your reason for the member being dropped. And we do have the option to note that the member has uh, is deceased. So you can simply mark them as uh, dropped. Note that the reason is that they've deceased and all of that information is saved for you. So you can see very quickly if you ever do a search on your dropped members, what the reason for dropping was. And we'll take a look at that too. Now, whenever you are dropping a member, and we're going to talk about dropping members quite a bit in this webinar, the first thing that you would be deciding is what to do with any transactions that they have listed on their account. The first option would be to delete all of the membership transactions. So that's removing them they would no longer be listed as an open transaction on your site. So when you go over to the transaction search feature, you're no longer going to see any of the transactions that Tom Wood may have left. You can move all of those transactions to another member. So if you have someone who might be taking over their membership, you can move those transactions to a different person. Or if you happen to have another family member in the same membership, you can move those transactions as well. Or you can opt not to change the transactions if you plan on writing them off or if you just want to leave them as is. And then finally, you'll see here that there's an option uh, to manage collectibles for that member. Now that's because on our demo club, that particular module has been enabled. The collectibles module is one of our built-in features. I'm not gonna go into that, but if you are interested, we have webinars and tutorials to teach you how to use the module and what it can be used for. So if you are using collectibles, you decide what to do with those collectible items. So that's the option for dropping a member. It's a really simple option. And I didn't actually drop the member because I want to actually use that member type for a few other things. Now, for dropping a member, it's a couple of simple clicks. That member will still have their contact information in your database. They're just going to be listed as a dropped member. So if we take a look at that search function right at the top, our member status search is automatically defaulted to include active and expired members. I can choose to view all of my dropped members and I'll go ahead and select search. Oh, we'll go ahead and remove that last name there. And so now I can see a list of all of my dropped members. And you'll see, as I was mentioning before, that we have in parentheses reasons for why that member was dropped. So all of that contact information, all of that uh, data is still saved in the database. It's just not something that's going to be right in front of you every time you go into your people manager. Now, the next option would be to change the contact information to the surviving partner or spouse or, uh, you know, a uh, sibling or whoever you might um, have who's ready to take over or assume that membership. So that's an even simpler fix. Now, with every single uh, member that you have access to within your people manager, you also have access to their member profile. So if I go ahead and take a look at my active members again, and we'll select search, and I'll go ahead and find Tom Wood, and he's here at the bottom. So instead of changing the membership status, I can go into Tom Wood's profile and edit the basic information to just go ahead and change the contact information for that particular member. Now, when you're changing the contact information, there really isn't a, an easy way to say that that membership profile formally, formerly belonged to Tom Wood. So if I change the contact information to uh, you know, Tom Wood's spouse or sibling, I would then go ahead and 
go back into my people manager. And at the very last portion of, again, the people manager search results, I have this maintain column, which has a lot of additional options and features for dealing with individual members and non-members in your database. One of those is the member notes option. So if I select this notes icon, I would then probably put a note in there of the date that I maybe received a phone call from a family member of Tom Wood, note what uh, I was told during that call and what they wanted to have happen with the membership. If they just wanted to assume the membership and add their own contact information, I would go ahead and add that in along with some dates so that if I ever go back and want to see the history, I can see in my notes that there have been a couple of changes. Now with the individual memberships, I'll go right back into our profile. So when we're updating the contact information, you're updating the email address, you're updating potentially phone numbers. Don't forget that that person may not have access to this, uh, the deceased member's member account. So when you're changing the email address, make sure that you reset the password for that member. And remember, as an administrator, you do have the ability to do that. So if you're adding a new email address, go ahead and add that new email address, reset the password for that member. And now that new member can take over that membership and manage it on their own. Now, the last option, and again, this is for an individual membership. The last option, a little more complicated, but bear with me. So we're going to be talking about member level changes, and we're actually going to add an admin only member type that we use specifically for this scenario. Now, keep in mind that you can add as many membership types as you need. So even if you only use this member type in a couple of situations over the next five years, it's not like you're paying to add an additional member type and maintain it. So you can add as many as you need. We're going to create an admin only member type that has one primary member and one tertiary member, because what we're going to do is we're going to add the surviving spouse or partner as a new member using that new member type. And we're going to move the deceased partner or member to that group membership as a tertiary member. Now, the reason that... <clears throat> The reason that I would maybe choose that option is if you wanted sort of a clear separation between the information of the surviving member and the information of the deceased member. So instead of combining, instead of adding a note to the account to state anything that happens after this date was performed by the surviving member. So from that perspective, you can maintain a clear record of the deceased member and still have that surviving member managing that membership. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop back into our control panel and I wanna take a look first at the member type that I've set up. So we can see that our demo club has a lot of different member types and we have a few that we've created just for today's webinar. So towards the top, we have our individual member deceased partner member type. And we've set that up. I'll go into my edit option here to take a look at how I've set that up on the back end. I've entered, entered in just a short description of what that member type is going to be used for. Now, under availability, what I want to do is our default availability for member types would be new members and renewals. But I actually want this to be admin only, not publicly available. What that means is a member signing up for the first time or renewing on their own won't see this as an option for a member type for them. The only time that this would be available would be if an administrator or coordinator was adding a member on their own through the people manager. And if I scroll down, I'm adding in an additional tertiary member. I've put the maximum at one because I'm just intending this to be for one person who wants to take over a loved one's uh, membership. And at the very bottom, I've added in my fee information. Now, of course, uh, you know, you can choose to do what you want with those fees. You can add in a fee and choose to maybe write that fee off as a, as a gift to the surviving member, or you can even just make that um, an honorary membership and make that cost zero. It's entirely up to you. Remember that this is going to be a completely separate member type. So you can 
edit this any way that you'd like. I'll go ahead and select save because I did make one quick change. Remember, I changed my availability settings. I'll go ahead and save that. And now let's go right back into our control panel and let's see this in action. I'm going to go back into my people manager and I am now going to add in a member and I'm going to choose that individual member and deceased partner membership type. And again, I'm doing this as an administrator. And so I can go ahead and I will add in Minnie Wood. Minnie Wood is, uh, we'll just call this a friend of Tom's and Minnie is going to, I'll go ahead and skip all of this information. I can enter in all of the information for Minnie, or I can go ahead and just click next and wait for Minnie to enter in that information on her own. Now, I'm not going to add a tertiary member from this screen because I already have the membership that I want to merge with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and select next. I'll get to my last page here. I'll go ahead and select finish and proceed to payment. I won't send an email out because there isn't an email address. Now, I'm going to go ahead and copy this in case I ever need it in the future. As an administrator, if you are entering in information for a new member or prospective member, and you have not entered an email address, remember that you're going to get this pop-up with the username and temporary password. So if you're doing this on the phone with this surviving member, you can go ahead and read that off to them. That way they can go ahead and log in on their own and they'll get prompted to enter in a more permanent password. Of course, you can use this to go ahead and uh, you can email it to them. You can send it to them in a letter. You can do anything that you'd like. Now I am going to, instead of marking this as paid because I'm an administrator, I'm going to go ahead and comp this charge and I'll go ahead and record the comp and I'm not collecting an actual payment from Minnie Wood. So now if I scroll down to the bottom, I have Minnie Wood's membership and right underneath that I have Tom Wood's membership. So I can scroll to the top. And right next to where I've added my new member, I can select member options and choose level changes. Level changes is going to allow us to move the membership of Tom Wood into the group membership of Minnie Wood. We're going to visit level changes a couple more times during this webinar. So what I want to choose in this situation is I want to link a solo member to a primary membership. And what I'm doing is linking my member, Tom Wood, to the new primary member, Minnie Wood, so that I've, again, merged their memberships together. So I'm using my standard member selector. And remember that, I'll go ahead and search for Tom Wood here. Remember that the primary member, we're talking about the new primary member. So we're talking about that surviving spouse that's going to be managing that membership. And I would go ahead and then search for Mini Wood. Go ahead and save it. And now if I scroll back down, I can see that we have that matched member type. And I can see that now we have those icons letting us know that those memberships have been linked together. So let's talk about what the options are if you have a member that's passed on from a household or family membership. Largely the same options. So let's take a look at option one dropping the member from the membership. Now we can take a look at any other membership. We can even take a look at Martin Smith's membership. So if Martin Smith went into his member profile, and this can be the case for going into any profile of any member that shares a membership within a group, I can see all of the additional members in the membership, and I can choose to remove those members at any point in time. I can remove these members from the individual membership. The member can remove those members from their membership. And then of course we have member level changes, changing the surviving member to the primary member and retaining the deceased member in the membership still. So if we go back into, let's go back into our control panel here and we go back into our people manager. When we're talking about member level changes again, we'll go back into member options and we have our level changes. So some of the options we have, the very top one would be likely the one that you're using, promoting a secondary member to primary. 
That means that the surviving partner or spouse who's still on the membership would be promoted to the primary member. All their membership information would stay the exact same. They would just be taking over that membership. So remember that being a primary member means that you manage the membership for everyone. You're responsible for renewal. You can register tertiary members for events. You can manage all of the contact information for everyone in the membership. So it's not just a matter of having a a name and a face at the top of the membership. They actually do have significantly different abilities than a secondary member and especially than a tertiary member. And then, of course, once you've switched the primary and secondary members, the deceased member would now be the secondary member, and you're going to want to change that deceased member to a tertiary member. That way, they're not listed as being part of that full membership. They don't need a login. They won't need to uh, manage their profile, and really no updates are going to need to be made at that point. So those were kind of two separate scenarios of what to do if a member has passed on. Now let's talk about another situation. A member should be banned from your organization. Now, of course, this is not something that we ever want to have to deal with. These are awkward problems, but should you face them, we have a handful of things that you can do. First things first would be dropping the member. Now, when we drop our members, we'll go back into our member status and we'll take a look at that one more time. Remember that we have a handful of reasons why we would want to drop that member. So for this, I would just choose terminated. You can choose to enter in any notes that you'd like. Uh, You know, of course, perhaps you might want to enter in a note of the exact reason that that particular member is being banned. Um, You know, if you are a diligent note taker and there have been many infractions from this particular member, you probably have several notes in there already. So there are, aside from just dropping the member, which then means that they, you know, they wouldn't have access to any member only content. They wouldn't have access to their own information. A couple of other things that you would want to do. And this is, again, if you have a member that might be problematic for your organization, maybe someone who signs up uh, as a, as a heckler, uh, you know, if you're with an organization that tends to be a little polarizing or Even if, and you'll see a note at the bottom of of your screen there, if a member is being harassed by another member and you need to ban the, uh, the instigator from your organization, consider requiring approval for your memberships. And there are a couple of other things that you can do in addition to requiring approval. Asking for contact information and consider verifying it. So let's take a look at those first two options. We're talking about requiring approval for membership and asking for contact information and verifying it. So let's go right back into our control panel. And we're going to take a look at member types first. With every single member type, and we'll even go back into the one that we just took a look at, I can note that they require approval. So that just means that every single time someone signs up, you would go ahead and see that someone has signed up and that they have a membership requiring approval, and you would go ahead and edit their membership status from perspective to approved, the same way that we've been changing membership statuses uh, for dropped members or anything like that. Now, in addition to requiring approval, we talked about verifying some contact information. So under our people options, that's when we kind of uh, decide what contact information we're collecting from a lot of people, whether or not uh, we are requiring an email address and a phone number. So in our miscellaneous options for people options at the very bottom, we can require a phone number and we can then choose to call that member. You know, of course, you can ask for an email address. I myself have created several email addresses. You can create a dozen in a day if you'd like to. Phone number might be a better bet. Sure, someone might change their number, but you probably remember their voice. And it just gives you an extra sense of maybe welcoming. Um, So we can look at it not just as a scary security uh, feature that we've added to our signup process, but just as a way to touch base with someone who's joining your organization. Maybe find out why they're joining. You can really, you know, have that phone call perform Uh, you know, double duty for you. Now, another option or another thing to think about would be, you know, if you do experience something like this, take a look at your module and web page visibility settings. Now, visibility settings can occur in a lot of different places. 
let's talk about our module visibility settings. We do have tutorials that go over how to configure modules and set them up through the control panel. Very quickly, if we select our configure option, it's going to show us all of the functions in this particular tab. Now, if we take a look at committees, for example, that's one of the modules that we have enabled on our site. Its visibility is set to any website visitor. I would want to change that to members only. That would be one way that you can change the visibility settings for all of your modules to make sure that those are protected by a member login only so that you wouldn't have banned members being able to access that content, especially if you have members that are maybe harassing other members showing up to events. Um, you know, these can these can really be anything. You can have these steps in place even if the person who is harassing a member in your organization isn't a member especially, you know, if they're a non-member and they maybe are showing up to events that you're hosting as an organization, consider making those events, uh, you know, behind a, a private page, behind that member login. The last thing that I want to point out is actually a relatively new feature that we've added to our additional member data questions. Configuring an additional member data question as almost a security question. So we've all answered those. Um, you know, when we sign up for something, they'll have us answer five different security questions. And I've never had to reveal so much personal information about myself. You don't have to make it that complicated, though. Under our additional member data questions, I've actually added one um, as an example. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the question and how I've set it up to kind of perform or act like a security question. We're talking about, again, sorry for the tech hiccup, but thank you for bearing with me. We're configuring an additional member data question as a security question. So I am going to go into my control panel, exact same spot. I'm in the people tab and I'm in additional member data. Now, when I'm adding a question, one of the new features that we added is under our question visibility, admin only except on sign up. So let's talk about our visibility settings. Our visibility settings for public means that the answer to that particular question can be visible in the member directory if you have that enabled. They might be visible to the member only. They might be answers that are visible or uh, visible to an administrator only, or Admin only accept on sign up. What that means is that the only time that member ever sees that question or even the answer they submitted was when they sign up for a new membership. Other than that, they will never see that question and answer again. You as an administrator can see that question and answer, but the member can't. So they answer it one time. And then if you have an issue where maybe, uh, you know, someone's trying to log into that member's account, or you just want to verify that you're speaking to the right person, if you're making changes or registering someone for an event, you can go into that particular member's member profile, check their additional member data questions and answers, and view the answer to that question, but the member won't be able to view or edit their own answer. So if you have any situations that you think this might apply to, um, you know, they can be anything from a member calling you to make some changes to their account, uh, signing up for something new, uh, just an extra way to verify, especially if privacy and security are really, really important to you that you're talking to the right person. So scenario number three would be another situation that could be common or not common at all, divorce occurring in a family or household membership. So in this, what you're really thinking of doing would be either removing one uh, of the head members from the membership. So, you know, you have your primary and your secondary members that are likely the spouses or the parents, you would potentially be just removing one of them from the membership. And we saw how to do that when we were taking a look at deceased members, just removing that person from the membership. Another option though, that you might have is that if you have a family that has now separated, but they both still want to maintain membership. So let's say, for example, that you're a cycling organization and just because they've divorced doesn't mean that dad doesn't want to sign up for cycling events on his weekends and mom wants to sign up for cycling events with the kids on hers. 
That means that they both need to have memberships. They probably both want to have their own membership and they're both going to need to be able to list their kids on that membership as well, because they want to be able to register them for events on their own. So what I would do again, we're creating these admin only member types and we're adding in just one primary member and some tertiary members. We're setting this up basically the exact same way that we set up our individual member or excuse me, our membership for deceased members, where we had that one primary and one tertiary member. So in this case, we would add in one primary member, which would be one parent and all of the tertiary members would be the children. Perhaps I even want to offer this membership for a reduced fee so that the family isn't burdened just because they have two separate memberships. They're still one family. So instead of offering the, uh, you know, the family membership is $60 um, with a $30 secondary charge, maybe I'd offer the uh, divorced family membership for $40 with just an extra charge for tertiary members. So let's take a look. I'm actually going to see if I can't bring this up on my other site where I know that I've have it configured and perfect. I can. So um, I'm back on the site that I have added in really quickly. I want to take one quick look at that additional member data question that I wanted to show you. I have it labeled as a security question here. And remember, I'm on a, a different demo site that looks the same, but it is different. Uh, so I have my security question and I have the visibility set up to admin only except on sign up. It's editable by the member only on sign up. And then, of course, the admin can take a look at it as well. And I'll go ahead and edit that. And all I've said is it's a short text answer. And I've asked for one of the three. So usually when you have a security question, you can choose the question that you want to answer. So what I've done is just list three off. You enter your answer. I really don't care what your answer is, uh, but you know I'll ask you based on the answer that you've given. I can probably guess uh, that your first pet's name was not a Chevy Cavalier, or maybe it was. So what I want to do now is, again, we are talking about when divorce might occur in a family and household membership. We'll go back into our member types, and you'll see that right above that individual member with a deceased partner, I have that family membership for divorced families. And again, this is set to admin only. It's not publicly available. So I can go ahead and add in that description again, where I'm noting for future administrators what this is to be used for. And if I scroll to the bottom, I can see that I've added in the option to add tertiary members only, no secondary members. And then let's take a look at how we would actually use that in a real world scenario in our people manager. Now, I have a family um, that has already been added to this membership so we can demonstrate how what this would look like. So I am going to take a look at my membership types and I'm going to choose my divorced family memberships. I'll go ahead and search. So. It was a sad day for all of us today. Barney and Betty Rubble got divorced and they share custody of their adopted son, Bam Bam, but they alas have a completely different household now. So they have two different memberships. You'll see that Bam Bam is actually in here twice, but with each of these, I'm actually able to find which Bam Bam is part of which membership through the primary member member profile. And I can also just take a look at the member numbers to see who corresponds with who. Now we'll see that Barney Rubble is here as an active primary member. Bam Bam Rubble is in the membership as a tertiary member. Now, the way that I got there was let's take a look at a couple, uh, another family that unfortunately is also suffering from some of the same issues. We'll go ahead and search for another family. And unfortunately, it looks like Fred and Wilma Flintstone's marriage is on the rocks as well, and they are now getting divorced. So what we want to do is use those same member level changes again. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a look at the uh, membership between Fred, Wilma, and Pebbles. If we take a look at those three, in my family membership, Fred's the primary member, Wilma is the secondary member, and Pebbles is the tertiary member. So if I go into my member options and select level changes again, I can unlink 
a secondary member into their own solo membership. So I can then choose Wilma Flintstone. Now, notice that I just started typing FLI. Where's Fred? That's because the system knows that you're only supposed to be searching for secondary members. It's only going to bring up secondary members in your search results. So you won't have to double check if that person's a primary, maybe in another membership. So don't worry about that. I'll go ahead and select Wilma. And that member type happened to be selected because it's right at the top of the list, but I would then choose the membership type that I want to apply to Wilma. I want to give Wilma that family membership, the divorced family membership. I'll go ahead and do that. So now you'll see that Wilma has disappeared from my list because I'm still searching by the one family membership member type. If I take a look at family membership divorced and I'll go ahead and uncheck my family membership, I can see there's Wilma. Now, Fred Flintstone's membership is, is still uh, active the way that it is, but I would likely want to change his membership to match the same one just so I can keep that straight. Let's talk about Wilma's first and finish that up. I can go into Wilma's uh, member profile and I can add in Pebbles Flintstone as a tertiary member. I can also just leave this up to Wilma. Wilma has access to her own member profile. She has her own login and password because she's a secondary member. So Wilma has the ability to take care of this on her own. Now let's go back and quickly just take a look at Fred's membership. And again, we've got Fred Flintstone. I'll go ahead and select his profile. So with all of Fred's information, I can do a couple of things. I can change the membership type. I can maybe edit some information about uh, Pebbles. I can, you know, if Fred's the one who's moved, I can change Fred's contact information. So if we take a look at member type expiration and join date under more member options, I can then change Fred's membership type really quickly to a family membership. I can even change the expiration date if I'd like to, but it looks like Fred's, uh, we'll go ahead and save that. And now we have our family membership divorce. If we go back into our people manager, we can see that Fred no longer appears in the list of just family memberships. He's just searchable by that divorced membership type. So that would be covering divorce or a family splitting up where you would want to make sure that you aren't penalizing everybody for something that just happens. So let's talk about scenario number four. And this is our final scenario for today. A member is well past due on their dues. This is unfortunate. Um, there are a lot of organizations that have people that maybe just don't pay for things on time, show up to events that they don't pay for, or maybe are way past you on membership dues or renewal dues. So you have a couple of things that you can do and they really would happen in stages. So the first stage would be freezing the member. Now, when you freeze a member, and again, we're right back in our people manager, we're really not going very far today. So I can choose to, we'll go ahead and reset our filters here and I'll choose a member. I can say that Orville Acton, you know, maybe he has a couple of things off the books that he hasn't paid for. Perhaps Jim's balloons, he has a pretty big outstanding bill. And what I'd like to do is actually freeze the membership. So when I freeze my membership, all that does is it prevents Jim from being able to uh, sign in and interact with the site as they would a member. They can't continue to rack up charges for events. They can't continue to access member-only content. You have the ability, I'll go ahead and save that freezed option. And up at the top, I will take a look at all of my other frozen members. So we have a couple of people who have been frozen so far. I can click that frozen link one more time and I can reinstate them anytime I'd like. So as soon as Jim is back in good standing with his arrears, I can go ahead and reinstate Jim's membership. Now, remember a couple of additional things here. I can, through a couple of different spots on my site, actually print out invoices for Jim. Jim's having trouble remembering exactly what he owes money on. Not a problem at all. I'll go into my money tab. I'll go into my transa transaction search feature. And 
These are all of my open payments. I see that Jim's balloon has a, an outstanding bill of $5 and I can select the reports icon and I can go ahead and essentially run a report, which is just a, a listing of what Jim owes. And I can do it by transaction or everything that Jim owes. So a transaction invoice is going to be one invoice per line item. A member invoice would have everything that that member owes on one single uh, sheet or multiple sheets if that member owes quite a bit. And then we also have email distribution lists that can help you out with this situation as well. So if we go back into our control panel in our communications tab, when we take a look at our blast emailing feature, one of the distribution lists, it's one of my favorites, and I bring it up in training all the time, would be a distribution list to email members who have an outstanding payment. So I'll go ahead and instead of uh, adding a new emailing, I'm just going to open up one that I have already added previously. The function is going to be the exact same. It's a draft, so I can still continue to edit this email. Under my distribution list option, I'll select edit distribution list and create a new list. And instead of searching through the list, I'm just going to type in payment at the top to filter out my search here. And here's my distribution list, users with a pending payment. And that's an easy way to email anyone who has an outstanding payment on your site. Now, unfortunately, the next option, if freezing the member doesn't result in anything fruitful, you can of course drop the member and with dropping the member, we'll go right back into dropping our member. This will be the final time, folks, I promise. We'll go into our people manager and we will actually search for an active member so that we can effectively drop them. I'll go ahead and select active. And when we drop our member, we can say that they were terminated uh, due to non-payment. Another option um, that you would have pending never paid, that would be used in a different scenario. So if you have someone who signs up for a membership but never actually completes payment, they'll just sit in a uh, pending status forever. Um, they won't even be an active member. So you can say that they were pending and never paid for their membership and you can drop them from your database. But we're just sort of looking at the terminated non-payment or any other option. Now, with the transactions, um, you can think about this in a couple of ways. You might want to not change the transactions because you might want to decide to write them off as bad debts um, just to make sure that your books look nice and clean. You can choose to, to delete them or you can move them all to a different member. Um, maybe you have another account set up that is maybe a dummy account that you move all of these transactions to for record keeping purposes. It's entirely up to you. Now, another thing to note would be, you know, one of the actions that you can take with expired members, members who maybe have never renewed, aren't going to renew, um, especially if you enforce continuous uh, renewal as part of your membership types. One of the options in uh, member options is our drop expired feature. Now, I want to just pause for a quick minute here and note that dropping all expired members is in red font with a star. So I want everyone to be extremely cautious with this feature. So when we select drop expired, what we are telling the system to do is drop everyone whose membership expired on the date that I've entered or prior. If I select go with today's date, everyone whose membership expired even yesterday is going to be dropped from the system. Take extreme caution when you use this feature. It is not something that it can always be fixed or I, you know, it's, it's one of those things that if you perform that kind of bulk action on your site, there isn't always a way to go back. Um, there are a lot of bulk actions that you can take in different areas across your site. We always would love you to take extreme caution when performing them. So if you happen to, you know, one of the things to note is that you could come to Club Express with a member list a mile long, but you know that most of those memberships expired many years ago and the members just haven't renewed and they're probably not going to renew. You can say, I want to drop everyone in my database who expired four years ago. 
Um, and you can move on from that point. But just again, take extreme caution if you are using the feature to drop all of the expired members. And with that being said, so those were kind of the four major scenarios that we called to, or that we uh, focused on today. So we talked about a member passing on. We've talked about a member needing to be banned. We've talked, and we've talked about, you know, increasing a little bit of site security. We talked about what to do if there's divorce or separation in a family membership. And then of course we talked about what to do with members who are past you on their dues. Uh, Michelle, how are we doing on questions? Hi, Sam. Thanks for asking. I've been pretty much been keeping on with them um, and replying. Um, there's a couple that just came in. So um, this one is, um, does the drop expired feature cover status equals expired or active but expired date is in the past? Um, does and actually, I know because I was one that tested that, but it, it, it is um, when the actual status on the account says expired. If the account is still active, because, you know, we don't want to drop somebody who maybe a club is expend, extending the expiration mm. and giving people a month past their expiration date as a, as a, to let them have more time to get it and pay. They are still active. The drop only drops the expired. Yes. And let me yeah, just pull up yeah. quickly where yeah. that sits. So if we take um, a look right at the bottom of our yeah, renewal page here, right, that's right. where we uh, would set that information that Michelle was just talking about. Um, let's see. And somebody also asked, um, let's see. Oh, were you going to show the automated expiration and dropping of members? Um, oh, and the well, we're on that page now, yeah. so we yeah. can. Yeah, right. So yep. Yep. when we are taking a look at our renewal and expiration settings, which is where you control what happens to memberships when they expire, at the very bottom under renewal notices, we have our expiration settings. So the first question that you would have answer, does the system expire memberships if renewal isn't received? So yes, on expiration means that Whatever date you've configured at the top of your screen to be the expiration date, whether it's based on the date they renew, the date they pay, which aren't necessarily the same date, or the old expiration date, if there's maybe a gap of a week or two between when they originally would have renewed and when they actually renew, if the system expires it on expiration, that means that the day their membership expires, that is the day that they lose access to the member only side of the site. Yes, with delay gives them that little bit of a, a grace period. Now, during that delay, they're going to get a pop up. Uh, they can get a pop up letting them know that their membership is expired and they need to renew. Um, they'll get email notifications depending on your renewal notice settings. And then at the bottom, what can the member actually do? Do you even want the member to be able to log in on their own to renew, or do you want them to call you? Uh, so if you select, no, the member must contact an administrator to renew, they won't be able to renew. They'll get a pop-up saying they have to call you and they'll call you to handle their renewal. Okay. Um, here's another question that just came in. Um, is there a way to archive a list of expired members that you may delete from the database? This would allow us to clean up our current database, but not lose the historical data. But I think you covered that by using that drop expired members because that, yeah. that doesn't delete them from the database. Yeah. So you'll see that even when I've dropped members, I still have the ability to bring those members back. So I can see a list of everyone that I've dropped from my database, even though I am not looking at them immediately through my active and expired. Because remember, every time you go into the people manager, active and expired are the default settings. And even through the reports that you can run, you can separate it out and only run the report with your active members. The members that you wouldn't be able to get back would be user data removal requests. So dropped members are still going to remain in the people manager. You just have to search for them separately. But if you full out remove a member from your database, their information is gone, completely gone. All of it's removed from your database. You're not going to be able to access it anymore. Any transactions that they may have had, when you run reports on those, their name's going to be redacted and it'll say, I believe it says name removed. 
Um, and so there's a record that something happened. It's just not going to be tied to the member anymore. Okay. And here's one more too. Um, what would be the benefit of moving a deceased dropped member to a tertiary level? Yeah. Instead great of question. dropping them. Yeah. So yeah. you can drop them. Um, the benefit, or it's not really a benefit so much is just a way that you can do it. So the reason that I opted to show that was what if you want that members or, you know, maybe the surviving member wants that members, uh, you know, their uh, deceased family members information still maintained you as an organization might still want a super clear record of what was part of that person's membership. So instead of merging that data with an existing membership or simply changing the contact information, we would add it as a separate membership, that tertiary membership that really doesn't get touched. It just kind of sits there as a full, complete record. Um, so the thing, one of the things is that if I change the uh, membership information, if I change the contact information, for example, or if I change the owner of that membership, there isn't a way, uh, there isn't a report or a record that you would be able to see on your end to say this person's membership formerly was uh, run by Tom Wood. Now it's being run by Minnie Wood. Whereas if we are adding that uh membership and creating that tertiary space for the deceased member, we can kind of see a much clearer uh, uh, timeline because we can see when that deceased membership actually started. So we know that moving forward, that tertiary members activity stopped, they were added to that deceased membership. And we still have that clear record of what belongs to the deceased member and what would belong to the surviving member going forward. Okay, that sums up all of the unanswered questions. All right. Well, thanks everyone for getting awkward with me today. Uh, I know that it was a lot of information. We, and it was a lot of little settings and a lot of little changes that you can make, but they're not impossible. So hopefully this answered some of the questions that maybe you've had to ask before once several years ago and forgot. Uh, maybe you're thinking, I hope I never have to ask this question, but if I do, at least I know there's an answer. So thank you so much for attending today's webinar. A recording of this is going to be available in a couple of days on our YouTube channel. Thank you, Michelle, for answering the questions in the chat, and we'll see you all in our next webinar. Goodbye, everyone.